Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Today we have a cat that you can't really see. So ignore the top because it's just full of no books and stuff. But there are three shelves here of books that I'm putting on a self-destruct TBR. I first saw one of these um, when Becca and the books did them. I don't know if she was the one that sort of created the whole idea, um, but I saw Becca and the books do one and then I saw Becca Fowl do one. So I will leave their, both their channels linked down below. They are the first people that I saw do them. I think Steph has also done one from Steph Loves. I will leave her link down below as well. They're the ones that I've, I saw do them. I don't know who the original person is. If you do know the original person who created this idea, thought this idea, let me know. But I have had all these books on my TBR for at least three years we're looking at and I've not touched them. Not even, I got them, but they went on my shelf. Some of them were in a, on a double stacked shelf right at the back, not even in view. So when Becky came round to organise my bookshelves, I decided that now was the time to put these on a self self truck TBR and if I haven't read them by this time next year I will be unhauling all of them. Here we go. First up is Rents by The Rents by Simon Butterworth. This was gifted to me by the author and initially I liked the sound of it but I just never picked it up. So this is a mod. This is a contemporary, a modern contemporary. So it says school is out. Summer has officially started, and the next thing on the list is the family summer holiday. At the age of sixteen, Jim is sure that this year's holiday is going to be the last one he has ever goes on with the parents. And in brackets, says the rents. In this mind, in in his mind, there was nothing they could do to stop him making this holiday one to remember. What were they going to do? Send him home? Two weeks, summer sun. What's the worst that could happen? Follow Jim on a summer holiday he's never going to forget. Next up, this is quite a battered. I have absolutely no idea why this is here. This is one of my less looked after books. <laughs> um, and this was, this is a 2005 book. I don't know if I bought this in 2005, but yeah. This is If You Could See Me Now by Cecilia Ahern. And it's a contemporary about a woman who's Life is a mess and someone comes to save her. She meets a guy, you know. You know what contemporary is. Will I read this? I don't know. I've heard mixed things about this author. I think I read quite a few of their books a few years ago and unhauled them. It's going to be a typical contemporary though, isn't it? But it's just whether it's going to be a well-written one or not. That is the question. Um, these are very difficult to get out because they're very tall. <laughs> But this is The Wolves of Winter by Tyrell Johnson. I have absolutely no idea what this is about. This was gifted to me back when it was published. When I initially liked the sound of it. And this is 2018. Lynn McBride has learned much since society collapsed in the face of a nuclear war. And the relentless spread of disease. As memories of her old life haunt her, she has been forced to forge ahead in the snow-covered Canadian Yukon learning how to hunt and trap to survive. But her fragile existence is about to be shattered. Shadows of the world before her found her tiny community, most prominently in the enigmatic figure of Jax, who sets in motion chains of events that will force Lynn to fulfil fulfil the destiny she never imagined. Hate it when they do this. Non removable sticker, but am I gonna like it? We don't know. Next up it is The Cliff House by Amanda Jennings. Cornwall, summer of 1986. The Davenports with their fast cars and glamorous clothes live in the dream in the breathtaking house overlooking the sea. If only, thinks 16 year old Tamsin, her binoculars drained on the perfect family in their perfect home. If only her life was as perfect as theirs. If only Eden Davenport would be her friend. If only she lived at the Cliff House. This was again gifted, I think, back in 2018. So. Sounds good. Am I going to enjoy it? We shall see. We shall see. James Patterson book called, what's it called? Step on a Crack and Michael Ledwidge. James Patterson and Michael Ledwidge. Don't know what this is about. Follows an NYPD detective 
called Michael Bennett, who has ten children. Lovely. Um, this was gifted to me by a friend back in 2016, I want to say, when I was a blogger. He was getting rid of a lot of books. This was one of them. I was like, okay, thriller. At the time, I was into thrillers. We'll see. This was another one, Cradle and All, that was gifted. Again, it's like a crime thriller situation. Kathleen from Privilege Newport, Rhode Island. Colleen from the Poor Remote Village. Two teenagers on opposite sides of the Atlantic whose lives are in great danger. Both girls are pregnant. A private detective named Anne Fitzgerald suddenly has the case of a lifetime. She quickly finds herself caught between the certainty of science and the possibility of a miracle which could stop the terrible medical epidemics now sweeping the globe. Once a nun and now a private detective with a master's in psychology, Anne's very belief in humanity is put to the ultimate test as she goes face to face with an unimaginable evil. Imagine you like it? We'll see. Next up, another one that was gifted, Results Murder by T.P. Fielding. I think I have another book by this gentleman, this person. Is it a gentleman? This is part of the Miss DeMont series. I think I do have another book by this author, Cozy Mystery. I like watching these. I used to watch Murder, She Wrote, and um, what was that medical drama with Dick Van Dyke in? I can't remember it. If I remember it, I will leave the name here. But I used to, the, this is like the equivalent of Miss Marple and Murder, She Wrote, but like make it book form. So I'm hoping that I like this. And if I do, I do want to keep it because I do like cosy mysteries and sometimes it's nice just cosy it with a mystery in it. Even if you do know the ending, I will rewatch Murder, She Wrote. Don't laugh at me because I will. Diagnosis Murder, that's it. Diagnosis Murder with Dick Van Dyke. Classic. Summary Justice by John Fairfax. Don't know what this is about. The last time Tess Devere saw William Benson, she was a law student on it work experience. He was a 21 year old led from the dock of the Old Bailey to begin a life sentence for murder. He'd said he was in innocent, she'd believed him. It's a true to life, fast paced, absolutely compelling story. If it's true to life, will I like it? I don't know. Next up, The Blind by A.F. Brady. Again, you're going to see a running theme here. Tends with thrillers, mysteries, crime. That kind of job because I went through a phase back in 2016 to 2017, 18-ish. Maybe a bit before 2016. I went through a thriller kick. Thriller crime. Very cheesy contemporary. Not like the contemporary right now. Although that is still cheesy but the writing was questionable in the ones I used to read. Still read them because they wouldn't love a trashy book now and again. It says, every morning, psychologist Sam James wakes up feeling empty. She lays on her makeup and drags herself to work. She ignores the empty bottles piled up at her door. One morning, a new patient arrives. Reputedly deranged and dangerous, Richard is a kind of impossible case. Sam has built a reputation on, so she's confident she'll unlock his secrets. But when Sam meets Richard, Richard seems totally sane. The further Sam has pulled into her new patient's story, the more his twisted past gets under her skin and soon... Sam is forced to confront the most terrifying thing of all, her own mind. Sounds intriguing, sounds quite terrifying. Will I like this? Will I pick it up in 2022? We shall see. I have a new game coming next year, so it's going to really push me to pick these books up. So we'll see. The Fourth Monkey. I think I had this on a NetGalley arc as well, that I never read. So, brilliant, complicated, psychopath. That's the four monkey killer, or four MK. I hate it when police name killers. Gives them more notoriety. Stop it. A murderer with a twisted vision and absolutely no mercy. Detective Sam Porter has hunted him for five long years. The recipient of box after box of grizzly trinkets, carved from the bodies of four MK's victims. But now Porter has learned the killer's twisted history and is racing to do the seemingly impossible Find for MK's latest victim before he's too late. Um, it says Seven meets the Silence of the Lambs in 2017's most shocking thriller. I've watched Seven with Brad Pitt in. It made me feel sick. I will never watch Seven again because that whole thing 
messed up my mind. If you don't know what Seven is, it follows a detective, I think it's two detectives actually, trying to find the killer who's going around killing people by using the seven deadly sins and the ways that he kills people. <gasps> He's just not nice. I'm not saying killing people is nice anyway, but you know, when people get killed by being shot in the head or, you know, stabbed, it's one thing, but torture, he tortures them. Seven deadly sins is just, uh, uh, nope, nope. That's why I'm never watching another Saw, because I do not like watching people getting tortured. Anyway, on to more books. Second row, Keep You Safe by Melissa Hill. Her mother knows best, doesn't she? Every mother faces impossible choices. Vaccination is one of the hardest. For single mum Kate O'Hara, there was no decision to make. Her daughter Rosie is one of the small percentage of Irish children who can't be vaccinated against measles. All Kate can do is hope that her little girl is safe. When we book Madeline Cooper, it was a leap of faith she wasn't prepared to take when she and her husband declined the controversial measles jab for their daughter Clara. All she can do is pray that it's the right decision. But when classmates Clara and Rosie both become sick, will Kate pay for Madeline's choice? This initially intrigued me, but I put it off reading. And then I went to pick, up it, pick it up last year because I was like, I need to read some of these books that I was sent like four years ago. But obviously, pandemic. <laughs> Vaccinations, pandemic. Do we want to know about this? Do we? Do we? Do we? Do we? We don't. We don't know. We don't know, people. The only one on this stack that I won't be getting rid of after I've read, unless I could just give it away to somebody, is The Lie of the Land by... What's it? What is it? Who is this by? The Lie of the Land by Amanda Craig. I don't really know what this is about because it's an uncorrected proof that I've got. And I don't have my phone on me right now. Yes, I do. Should we Google it and see what it's about? Should we Goodreads this? Quentin and Lottie Bredin, like many modern couples, can't afford a divorce. Having lost their jobs in the recession, they can't afford to go on living in London. Instead, they must downsize and move their three children to a house in a remote part of Devon. This does not start well in a remote part of Devon. Why do you have to go remote? Arrogant and adulterous, Quentin can't understand why Lottie is so angry. Devastated and humiliated, Lottie feels herself to have been intolerably wounded. Mud, mice and quarrels are one thing, but why is their rent so low? What is the mystery surrounding their unappealing new home? The beauty of the landscape is ravishing, yet it conceals a dark side involving poverty, revenge, abuse and violence which will rise up to threaten them. Sally Verity, happily married but unhappily childless, knows a different side to the country life. As both a health visitor and sheep farmer's wife, when Lotta's innocent teenager son Zan gets a zero hours contract at a local, local pie factory, he sees yet another. At the end of their year, the lives of all will be changed forever. A suspenseful black comedy, this is a rich, compassionate and enthralling novel in its depiction of the English countryside, a particularly lethal interplay between money and marriage. Strong Jay. Strange. Next up we have The Intervention and The Intervention Forgiven by Tony Burry. These are books one and two, I think. I think these are books one and two. I think maybe book two or three. These were gifted to me um, by Vanguard Press um, and the follow... I think I don't know if Yeah. Follow a guy called Alex Keaton. This is, these are like crime novels. It's a series of crime novels. Don't know what else to say about that. Next, Big Bad Wolf by James Patterson. Another one that was gifted to me by a friend. Probably, yeah, don't really know what else to say. Don't really know what else to say. Her Fearful Symmetry by Audrey Nifeniger. You could tell this is well loved. Not even really sure what this is about yet again. Um, when Elspeth Noblin dies, she leaves a beautiful flat of a looking Highgate cemetery to her twin nieces, Julia and Valentina Poole, on the condition that their mother is never allowed to cross the threshold. But until the solicitor's letter falls to the door of their suburban sub American home, neither Julia nor Valentina know that, knew their aunt existed. The twins hope that in London, their own, their own separate lives can finally begin, but they have no idea that they have been summoned into a tangle of frail lives. From the obsessive compulsive crossword setter who lives above them to the aunt's mysterious and elusive lover who lives below them and works in the cemetery itself. 
as the twins unravel the secrets of their aunt who doesn't seem quite ready to leave her flat even after death. If and go we used together a delicious and deadly ghost story about love, loss and identity. It's a ghost story. The Thousand Tiny Miracles of Living Twice by Katrina West, um, an Angel Aid book one. This was gifted to me by the author um, and she signed it so this will not be getting, I don't think this will be getting on hold at any point but I really do want to get to it so it's going to my self-destruct TBR cart anyway. So it says, a middle-aged saleswoman becomes a Hollywood star, a small celebrity becomes a suburban housewife, an angel becomes a human being. It sounds really good. It sounds like a comfy cause of contemporary. I should read it. I'm not going to read the synopses of every one of these because I realise it's now 23 minutes in and I'm going to be here all night. So the next up is A Secret Diary of Demented Housewife by Neve Green. It looks middle grader. It looks like a child book. But I don't think it is. Um, I think it's like a contemporary. One housewife, one year, one hilarious insight into modern life. <sighs> yeah, again, I bought that one. Never read it. The one that got away by Annabelle Canteria. Everyone has an ex they still think about. I think this might be the... This is, once again, a proof copy, I think. Is it? This doesn't say what it's about. Something makes Stella click yes to attend her school reunion. Oh yeah, first comes the invitation. Something clicks makes Stella click yes to attending her school reunion. Followed by the affair. It's been 15 years since she last saw George. Their relationship may have ended badly, but there's an undeniable spark between them. Then the consequences. But once someone gets you back, what if they never let you go again? This might not be one for me. I'm not a fan of the stalker trope. Um, I'll give it a go. Next one is I See You by Claire McIntosh by the author of I Let You Go. This was also gifted, I think, um, in 2016. Um, you do the same thing every day. You know exactly where you're going. You're not alone. Again, a stalker trope. I might not like this. When Zoe Walker sees her photo in the classified section of a London newspaper, she's determined to find out why it's there. There's no explanation, just a grainy image, a website address and a phone number. She takes it home to her family who are convinced it's just someone who looks like Zoe. But the next day, the advert shows a photo of a different woman and another day after that. Is it a mistake, a coincidence or is someone keeping track of every move they make? Yes, stock trope. Might not like that, but I'll try. Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. If you've got anything to do in the next 24 hours, do not pick up this book. It's what it says on the back. So, I was gifted this back in 2017. And the first thing just says, my name is Emma Reynolds. There are three things you should know about me. One, I'm in a coma. Two, my husband doesn't love me anymore. Three, sometimes I lie. I, yes, this is an uncorrected proof copy. So, probably won't be getting rid of this, but I need to get round to it. So it's on the pile, it's on the pile, guys. Next up, Finding Hope by Claire Mer Merchant. Don't know what this is about. What What do you do when you lose a person dearest to you? How do you get to live, let alone love again? Contemporary, is it? It's a romance. We'll see. Next up is Viz Gothic, The Barbarians of Midgard by J.P. Newcomb. This was gifted to me by Pegasus Publishing. This sounds like something more on my alley. It's mystical, it's goblins, ogres and gargoyles, wizards. It sounds like something right up my alley, but I think because it's an author that I've never heard of since, I am still not sure whether I want to pick it up, but I'm going to try. Um, then, again, another un uncorrected proof. This is Choir and Hope Street. This is a cute contemporary about um, a community trying to save a community centre from being destroyed. There's no reason why I shouldn't enjoy that book. I think I might enjoy it, but will I keep it? We don't know. Next up we have The Bloodline, Forbidden Hunger by Craig J. Black. This was kindly gifted to me by the author. This is a fantasy romance. I'll probably get to around this sometime. Another uncorrected proof. The Killing Grounds by T Jack Ford. If the truth dies, he'll kill her all over again. Ex-US Navy turned investigator Thomas J. Cooper is tortured by his past. A deadly fight with Somali pirates and a tragic accident at sea have left him struggle with PTSD and addiction to prescription drugs. When he and his colleague Maddy return to the Democratic Republic of Congo to investigate a mysterious disappearance of a plane 
what they find is far more sinister and dangerous. Next up, Firework by C.J. Burton, and I think I've got another one. I'm sure I had another book by C.J. Burton as well, but this is a mystery, a crime mystery. I say I'm going to zip it these, but I won't be able to because of uncorrected proofs, so I want to try and see if I can go onto like an ARC um, or some website just to sort of give them away, maybe. I don't know. This is called White Bodies by Jane Robbins. I uh, don't really know what this is about, but it is big text. And it has sprayed edges. This is probably my first ever book that came with sprayed edges. Next up, The Temple of Heaven by Stella Art. This is about a dragon by a young girl. It says Forbidden Love, The Last Dragon and the Fate of an Empire. Let's go. I don't want to keep you here too long, so I'm going through these quickly now because I'm also really tired. <laughs> Killing Floor by Lee Child. I put this up as a poor pick, um, a trick or treat on Spoopy Halls, Spoopathon, but it wasn't picked. And at the time I was glad because they don't care. But this is a Jack Reacher novel. Again, crime, thriller, crimey thrills, crimey thrills. Um, I, find, I Found You by Lisa Jewell. I've heard this is good. Will I like it? Will I want to keep it? Will I want to get more her novels? We do not know. Dost thou recommend this? It's about Lillian Alice. Your next, your, no, your next must read page turner. Um, probably came out in 2017. Should have been one that I read back in 2017, but did I read it? No! The Riviera Express by T.P. Fielden. Is this another Miss Thingy novel? Mr. Mont, yes. Mr. Mont. It's another part of the Mr. Mont series of novels. Situation is. Close to Home by Cara Hunt. By a little girl that disappears from a family party. Um, no one saw anything, or at least they're not saying that they are. Will I read that? I don't know. I don't really like missing stories, but we'll see. As bad as it sounds, because you don't get to know anything about the person who goes missing, unless they go missing like halfway through a novel. Once you've built the character up, you don't feel anything for the person that's missing. So generally don't feel an urgency to like a connection with the characters. The only thing that might be different about this is because it's a child. But then again, that might be the reason why I don't want to read it. <laughs> we'll see. This is Reasonable Force by C.T. Sullivan. This was another book by Pe Pegasus Publishing. It's a crime mystery. We'll try it for a baby. And it's about someone who lusts after this guy's wife. It does it have a cheating trope. If it does, I probably won't like it. We'll see. Um, Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. I've heard very mixed reviews about this. And I've heard that the film was not... Was it, a, was it made into a film or a series? It wasn't as good as a book. But again, we'll see. Um, obviously, this cover is the movie Time cover. Apparently, in the book, she's made out to be totally different to how she's portrayed in the film, which puts people off, but I don't know. This is kind of like a stalker-esque. Um, oh, yeah, it says now it's a major film on there. <laughs> I think this is kind of like a stalker-esque feel. I might not like it. We'll see. The Light Tree by Frances Harding. I have tried to read this multiple times. Writing is small, book is 2015 and I've tried at least three times. I might even, I might even try and get the audio to see if I can get into this. If I try this again and DNF it again, I'll be just getting rid. The Turn by Kim Harrison. Kim Harrison returns to her beloved Hollow series with the official prequel. Not even read the series, didn't know it was a series, it was gifted. Once again, by a publisher, about four years ago probably. Can science save us when all this fails? Trisk and her hated rival, Kalamak, have the same goal. Save their species from addiction. <laughs> save their species from extinction. Death comes in the guise of hope when a genetically modified tomato created to feed the world combines with a government new tactical virus, giving it an unexpected host and a mode of transport. Plague takes the world, giving them paranormal species an uncomfortable choice. Stay hidden and allow humanity to die, or show themselves in a bit to save them. Do we want to read something about viruses that are transmitted? No. No. That might be something I just unhaul. 
<laughs> we shall see. All is not forgotten by Wendy Walker. This was forgotten at the back of a bookcase. For many a year. And there's dust everywhere. How far would you go to protect your daughter? Since the night she was attacked, Jenny Kramer hasn't been able to recall what happened. Her parents and the doctors saw to that. Her mother couldn't prevent the terror in the woods, but she's done all she can to stop it ruining Jenny's life. The only thing now that bothers Jenny is the scar carved into her lower back, which she can't stop touching. But if Jenny can't remember her attacker, he can't be caught. He could be standing next to her right now, the one who just caught her eye. Creep it, will I like it? I don't know. Is it going to be a take on the fact that this guy did it and I'm stalking it? I don't know. Um, The perfect wife, the perfect job, the perfect family, it should all have been mine. Um, I think this is actually, this is called her perfect wife. Gracie Dwyer has it all, the husband, the child, the house, but perfection is easy to shatter and Juliet wants nothing more than to pick up the pieces. It's another creepy step into someone else's life situation, isn't it? Creepy, creepy. Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker. Two sisters vanish. Only one comes back. Another missing story. When my sister and I disappeared three years ago, they found Emma's car at the beach. Some people believed she had gone there to find a party or meet a friend who never showed. They believed she'd gone for a swim. They believed that she'd drowned. Maybe an accident, maybe a suicide. Everyone believed Emma was dead. As for me, well now I'm back to tell our story. You'll have to see if you believe it. The last one is Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. Jack, handsome, dedicated lawyer, loving husband. Grace, elegant, consummate housewife, prisoner. Everyone knows a couple like Jack and Grace. He has looks and wealth, she has charm and elegance. You might not like, you might not want to like them, but you do. You would like to get to know Grace better, but it's difficult because you realise they are never apart. Some might call this true love. Others might ask why Grace never answers her phone or can't move for lunch without Jack and why there are bars on one of the bedroom windows. This sounds creepy as feck and I don't know if I will like it because it's about an abusive relationship. Um, not saying that's like a massive trigger but yeah. The reason I haven't immediately unhauled the ones that I don't know if I'll like is because I want to give them a go but obviously if I start to feel triggered anyway, I will DNF them. I'm not afraid to DNF books anymore. So I think I will be more inclined to pick these up. And with my new game next year, I will be picking some of these up anyway. So stay tuned for my TBR game that I'm going to be running for the next 12 months at least. And yeah, that is my self to show TBR. I will be coming back to this in 12 months to see if I've read any of these. If I did, did I like any of these? Or did I just straight DNF them <laughs> without reading them? We shall see. Come along for the ride if you like. If you do like me, subscribe, comment, leave a like. Um, let me know what books you like to read. Do you like thrillers? Do you not like thrillers? Do you think, have you read any of these? Do you think I would have like any of these? If you know me and my tastes, do you think I will enjoy any of these if you've read them? Please let me know your thoughts. And until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. And I will see you in tomorrow's video for another Vlogmas video.